Well, hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Photoshop User TV. We are brought to you by Kelby One, who bring you, of course, there it is. Whoa, making Arnaldo run Photoshop to the other camera. User <laughs> Magazine, there we go. And we are currently out there with our wedding issue for March, so hope you enjoy that. Be on the lookout for the next issue here in the next couple weeks. I am Corey Barker, one of the Photoshop guys, and I am joined once again, I'm going to stall this out so the lower third can, can have a, a moment to it's come waiting, up. waiting. I am joined yet again by Mr. Pete Collins. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Yeah, we're doing good. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing okay. We're, Thanks. We're, we're, we're here. <laughs> we're here and we're ready to start. So we are not going to bore you with a lot of... No dilly-dally. No dilly-dally. Or shilly shall And dive right in because I've got a 37-minute tutorial for you today and I don't want to waste one second. So... <laughs> All right, am I first? I, hey, Corey, I first. How, about, I, how about a 3D I, tip? I didn't even look at the prompter. I was like, am I first? Yes, I am. All right, now, 3D, indeed. No, um, actually, uh, this is a response to an email. I don't remember the person's name, but I do remember the topic. It is uh, dealing with textures in 3D. Now, of course, I'm a big fan of textures. You are as well. And uh, I use them from all kinds of sources, be it my phone or stock images or whatever like that. But you want to be able to put them in a 3D environment and do the lighting in the way you, uh, where you would really want to have it. Now, this was partially inspired by a trailer for the new, new show Daredevil uh, that's coming out on Netflix. Um, and it had these cool kind of um, textured walls that had the graphics, you know, kind of in 3D text and everything like that. So I wanted to show you how you can uh, approach that very quickly and easily with a simple uh, texture image like this. So we've got this kind of cracked cement, and it's a really cool texture and everything like that, but we're going to bring it into the realm of 3D and have a little fun with it. So the first thing is I'm going to go and make this a postcard. I do not need to have this to have any dimension to it or volume, so I do not need to make an extrusion or anything like that. So I went ahead and made it a 3D postcard. Now when you do this, it does not create or apply any default lights to your 3D scene. Notice if I go in the light section, there are no infinite lights or default, you know, spotlights or anything like that. Normally when you would create an object, it would uh, apply it. But it just looks exactly the way it did uh, before I converted it to 3D. So if I go over here and move it around, it is in three-dimensional space, but it still looks like it did when we first opened the image. So we've got to turn the lights out in a sense before we can bring in the lights we want to use. Now, what I'm going to do first is in the environment property, which I have selected here, I'm going to go down here and by default, it applies a white image-based light, which is just basically a white document. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and you'll see the image go black. What happened? Did it disappear? That's what Daredevil sees. No, we're going into the blind light. All right, um, so I'm going to go back over to my scene here. Let's select the background object and I'm going to go ahead and make the ambient dark as well. So all the lights are out in this image. So now let's go ahead and introduce a new light. So we're going to go into the light sections one, once again. I'm going to choose new spotlight this time. And look at that. We've got a very cool, very dramatic spotlight that we can kind of pull out. Now, this, of course, can be used in so many different ways. If you're a photographer, you want to create a really dramatic backdrop for your model shots. You want to extract them, put them against the background, and you want to do that kind of backlighting or you know that you couldn't do on the scene or something like that, you can certainly create that and move this lighting around and do all kinds of cool things with it. But we are, in a sense, doing kind of a tidal effect here. So what I want to do first is emphasize all the cracks and such uh, in here. Yes, we can see them, but I really want to feel like they actually have depth to them. And that's going to come by way of a bump map. Now, in Photoshop, I'm going to jump over here to my main file or the main layer, the background layer. And then over in the properties panel, we have our diffuse property right here. Now I'm going to go, oh, not that. So I'm going to go in here and choose edit texture. It's going to open up the original file of that texture. What I'm going to do is do a command A and select all and then command C, copy that image to the clipboard. We'll close this and won't save any changes or anything like that. Now, I'm going to go down to my bump property and choose new texture. And it's going to go ahead and remember the dimensions of the, the file in the clipboard, so you just go ahead and click OK. And then we're going to jump back in there and choose Edit Texture again, and then paste the image. Now, a bump map is going to look at every little nuance of texture in the image, and it's going to create, uh, it's going to enhance the texture in a sense. So I really want it to be emphasized on the cracks and such like that, but as far as the actual texture of the uh, concrete, I don't want it to be as uh, strong in that area. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and run A, Surface Blur. The Surface Blur allows you to blur large areas of your image without affecting any of the edge detail. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do radius and threshold at 10 and click OK, and it does a pretty good job. But I'm going to do Command F and apply it again, perhaps even several times. And see how smooth, you know, we really lost a lot of the detail, but the edge detail is there. So I'm going to close that, save the changes, and now you can see how much more enhanced that crack is. Or the cracks are, the little you know, bumps and such in there. If I zoom in here a little bit, you can see. So now, I'm going to go in here into the lighting. And there's another little point that a lot of people tend to get. You want to get that kind of shine, almost like it's almost wet, in a sense. So what you'll do is go over here into specular. And I'm going to increase the, the, the lightness of the specular highlight there. And when I do that, and if I rotate the camera view here, or no, let's rotate the object, rather. Can't move the light. But notice how it's reacting to the light there? I'm getting all that moiré effect in there. That's pretty cool, huh? So we're getting that cool kind of reflected light. Now I'm going to go and just uh, throw some text in on that. Let's do a new 3D extrusion. Now I'm going to merge this down. It's going to just drop it right into the scene. And look at that. It's casting a shadow, doing all that kind of cool stuff. I'm going to push the text back a little bit. And let's make that shadow considerably softer. I'm so e even though you merge those two layers together, they're two separate entities. They are two separate elements, indeed, yes. Yeah, so like when you merge two layers normally, let's jump over here to the 3D panel, you can see. Yes, it looks like one layer in the 3D panel, but notice here in the 3D panel, we've got it. There's our text element, and then we have our background element. So again, we can go in here and modify them individually. Now what I want to do is go over to that lights section again, and I'm going to go ahead and set here um, for the shadow softness, which is uh, default at 50, or I'm sorry, at zero. I'm going to do that at 50 to make that shadow a little bit softer, and then we'll do a quick render and see what we get in the end there. So you can see, now it looks a little less like it's a graphic element and actually looks like it's just got text in that three-dimensional space in with that lighting. In fact, I'm going to think I'm going to bring that intensity of that lighting down a little bit. But this is the cool part. Once you have all these elements in place, that's probably a little too light or too dark. Once you have all these elements in place, then it's just a matter of going in there and modifying those light and uh, texture settings just to get the perfect scene in place there. But that's being able to take a simple texture. And this texture could have been from my phone. I've actually used textures from my phone. It really doesn't matter where you get it. But once you get it in there, you can put it in context and make something really cool out of it. Well, I think the key thing to remember is that you can go back in and tweak all those things. We mm. tend to get this mindset, I've merged it all together, it's stuck that way, mm. but you still have the editability the whole way through and in that, 3D. And that's one of the huge leap forwards, especially with the last couple of versions of Photoshop and 3D, is that it has made it that much more forgiving for you. Used to be you had to, once you created 3D text, I think it was CS4, once you create extruded text, it rasterized it. Right. You could no longer edit it. And that certainly has been changed. I could go back and change whatever this says now, um, change the type altogether and not have to go back and restart the project altogether. So it's really forgiving in that way. So Yeah, that's great. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I've got a little tip for you. we got some giveaways, so we'll see you right back here in just a minute. Oh, wait, wait. Greg, do you see that? Yeah, Ren. What, what tracks are those? I don't know. Um, these look like moose tracks. Moose? In Africa? The station says fresh tracks of a moose heading east from First Sunday Piccadilly towards Fred Street. Greg, keep a lookout for fresh scat out here. Brendan, I don't know what moose scat looks like. Let's ahead, easy. Bring it, look. <laughs> Moose is in Africa. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, hey everybody, we're back. Welcome to Photoshop User TV. I'm Pete, one of the Photoshop guys, and Corey here, and we met actually at Photoshop World. Indeed we did, yeah. So, and of course, nice segue, Pete. You like that? Woo! We are, of course, in, at the Mandalay Bay, <laughs> in Mandalay. We're in Las Vegas in August for Photoshop World at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino. It's going to be August uh, 10th, I believe, is the uh, first day. I believe that's uh, pre-conference, pre-con day, or something like is, that. Is uh, the tenth, then we have eleven through the thirteenth. Eleven through the thirteenth. Yep. There you go. So go to PhotoshopWorld.com. Scroll down here. You can see the who's who of Photoshop, photography, Lightroom. They're all right here. And look, there's me. There's Pete, right there. But do check it out. We've got a lot of great uh, instructors. A lot of new courses this time around. So there'll be a lot of great new stuff on there. And uh, be sure to take advantage of the early registration. If you go to pricing, do we have an early bird? We should have an early bird that usually gives you a great deal if you register early, so yep, make so you, sure you check it out. Oh yeah, if you register before May 5th, you can save $100 on the registration right there, so be sure to find out more about that at PhotoshopWorld.com. Hope to see you there in Las Vegas. Yep. So. Speaking of Las Vegas, this has nothing to do with Las Vegas, but I'm going to give you a little tip. And if you haven't taken advantage of this in the Creative Cloud suite, you crowd? really are missing Creative Cloud. Crowd. Yeah, it's crowded up there. You're missing out on some wonderful resources that Adobe's giving you for free. All right, so if you have not been taking advantage of all the stuff the Creative Cloud has to offer you, you definitely need to check it out, especially when it comes to assets. Adobe's got some amazing stuff if you go over to the Creative Cloud app and you go into the market. And they have had different artists create uh, backgrounds, textures, Photoshop files, and including brushes. And I wanted to show you, I love brushes. Corey and I mess with brushes all the time. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, do some amazing things with brushes. And the nice thing is now I can just go in. It's kind of like, as Corey said before, it's kind of like super deluxe clip art. It's way better than clip art. But think of it kind of that way. I can go in here and let's say I look at this and it's a paint fur brush. Well, I like that. So I'm just going to simply hit download and place it in my library of, of folders of files that I have from the Creative Cloud, and if I go over here, I can just simply go from Market to Files and click on Open Folder. And now I'll just simply have to click inside the uh, Market Downloads, and I'm gonna come in here, and uh, I had already downloaded this earlier, and I had to re-download it, so where did it go? You gotta find it in here. Well, where did it It's go? hiding on me, hiding on me. You can see, I use these all the time, so I've downloaded all kinds of different brushes. There's the Flourish. Well, while you look for it, I will point out again, like, I, Aha, is right that here. this is a local folder. He went and then went to open folder. It's a local folder on your machine that is synced to your Creative Cloud file. Right. So now I have that file sitting on my computer that I can use any time. So I clicked on it, and you saw it just popped up for a second. Now it's loaded, and it should be the last brush in there. And now I've got this fur brush that I can use at any time. And that's, that's part of the tip I wanted to share with you is how easily you can get these resources. But the other side of it, look at this. I've got that brush here. And, and these are all from, the, I've downloaded several from the same person. And if you look, they're the exact same tip shape that you have on each one of these. But if I click on that one, it's an entirely different brush. There's a crackle brush. And then if I come in and I click on this one, it looks like they should all be the same ones, but they're different brushes. And what this allows you to do is go in and start playing with these, look at these, and see how they're built to understand more and more how brushes work. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't seem like you should get that style of brush from the same tip. What's going on there? Well, then you start playing and realize that he's added textures to it. And so you come in here and see what kind of texture he's added and all the different settings that he does, and suddenly you have a better insight into how the brush works, but also how to make your own brushes. And so that's kind of the dual purpose of me showing you this tip. First of all, how to access them and be able to use them for your own devices, but then how to get in there and research and play with them to figure out how they really work. Because mm -hmm. wouldn't you agree, they're some of the most powerful tools in Photoshop. Oh yeah, oh, and, and the brush, brush engine itself is still one of the most powerful features of Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is, added to that, is once you've gone in and started modifying an existing brush, understanding, like he says, it's a very good point about understanding how to build and understand how brushes 
create, you can then continue to save your own brush right. based on that. So you can have a whole library of brushes based on the, you know, very, uh, a similar basis. You know, because we all learn in different ways, mm -hmm. and I find that I learn how these things work a little bit better if I can get in there and tinker with them and play mm -hmm. with them. So me getting and looking at different examples of other people's brushes mm -hmm. they made actually helps me understand how to make my own. And so I, I'd encourage you to go in there, take advantage of the Creative Cloud, the stuff that they've given mm -hmm. you, and then get in there and play and learn how it works. Uh, I'd say the same thing about layer styles too. If you download styles and load them in, you can actually go and see how they were put together and modify them and uh, create your own on that. Yep. Very cool. Yep. So be sure to check out the marketplace. All right, we're just about done here, but we've got. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. We have a Peach Pit ebook deal that Pete. Yes, that's about right. Right now. Uh, and this ebook deal, let's get it up so you can see it a little bit better. Yes, that's so much better. <laughs> uh, and this book is called, I'm going to click into it, it's called Urban Exploration Photography by Tim, Todd Sipes. And, and what it is, is he's going to go in a guide of creating and editing images in abandoned places. It's a big deal right now. A lot of people loving to go out there and doing urban exploring photography. And he helps guide you through a lot of that. And right now, if you will go there, it's peachpit.com slash Kelby1. If you will go in there and add the coupon code Kelby1, you'll get 40% off this book uh, for the next little duration. So go in there, check it out. It's Urban Exploration Photography by Todd Sipes, and you can get 40 percent off at peachpit.com. Fantastic. And of course, that leads us to our final giveaway. We have a new book here this week. We have The Way of the Digital Photographer by Harold Davis. Look at that. It's a very nice cover right there. And it's, it's uh, walking, wait a minute, walking the Photoshop post-production path to more creative photography. There you have it. All right. So very colorful. <laughs> like great images in there. So Pete, you can have that copy. I'm going to take this. I need to uh, need Show me the way. But to win this, you simply go to Kelby1 slash Kelby1.com slash webcast slash contest. Go to the pop-up menu here. Choose uh, Photoshop user TV, enter your name, email, and send us a comment, question, anything you want to see on the show, anything like that. Just entering your name, of course, is enough to enter you to win the book. But we'd love to hear from you. Love to know what you would love to see on the show. So be sure to do that right now. Stop what you're doing. Do it right now. There we have it. Well, there you go. All right. Well, Corey, thank you so much for being here. Indeed, uh, indeed. Guys, thank you for being with us. We do appreciate you watching us. Uh, make sure you send us your comments uh, and, and money. We do like money. Donations uh, are... No, we don't take donations. But we're here <laughs> hopefully every Thursday for you. We're going to be back next week with a whole other set of tips for you. So make sure you check it out then. Until then, take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>